Russian Iranian cuisine. But before that, I'm sure you'll want to check out the behind the scene. Let's go! Lastly, Chef Sebastian Obesi right here, the master behind a most restaurant. Are we ready? Absolutely, let's come on in and show you around. She's toasting our bread. We cook it halfway. When they're ready to be served, we throw on the stovetop and bake it one last time just so we can give that crispy, fresh uh, texture. So this is where we grill all of our kebabs here. As of right now, uh, as you're saying, we are actually getting ready for a large catering order that's gonna be picked up very soon. So the kitchen's pretty caught up doing that. Uh, this is our expedition line, which we uh, expedite all of our dining and carryout orders. We have the restaurant, we have a food truck, and we also have a catering business. Caters to pretty much Washington, D.C. metro area. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, so this is one of our uh, autumn and winter seasonal items, roasted beet salad. This is actually a warm salad. I got the other two items as well. Okay. So this item right here is another seasonal item, which uh, we call kadu. Kadu in uh, Persian means uh, squash or pumpkin. We have about eight choices of stews that people could choose from, and we uh, stuff it inside the acorn squash. Okay, so this item right here is the uh, chimichurri lamb kebab. As, as many people know, chimichurri is not a Persian uh, sauce. It's not a Persian recipe. It's a, actually an Argentinian uh, sauce that's used to uh, grill meats with, to marinate. Uh, chicken or fish. So I thought it would be very creative to actually serve a lamb that's marinated in the chimichurri sauce in a form of a kebab. Cooking aspect of it, it's Iranian, mm. but the sauce itself, not so much. Not it's Argentinian. For a long time, I can carry multiple <laughs> plates. Water, very slight flavor of lavender, but this is so warming and so calming. I just love it. And look at how cute this spoon is. So, this is Labu, a warm salad that is only available from September through uh, February. It's sort of a fall dish, and this is served warm. It's basically roasted beets cooked for a very long time, mixed with pomegranate uh, basil sauce, and topped with some goat feta cheese. I can't wait to dig in. Look at that presentation right there. Ooh, look at that sauce. It looks so juicy and it's super red and purple. Let me put some more cheese on it. Mmm, look at that. Usually, I don't prefer salad with beets because it's a little bit, it's a pretty strong flavor and it's a little bit bitter. But this beet is super sweet and so juicy. I have, I just love how they marinated it and how they seasoned this. My husband, his first reaction to it was like, "Oh, this is like much more sour than he thought." And then he just kept trying a second and third bite, and he really liked it actually, because it doesn't taste very raw or bitter, and this is very tender, soft, and, and mostly sweet, and just a tiny bit of sourness. So I think if you don't generally like these, don't be afraid to try this. And we were really surprised; we actually really like this. Yeah, definitely try this. The second entree we got here is the kabu. Kabu itself means acorn squash, uh, stuffed with uh, any type of stew you'd like to choose. Here we got the lamb shank, which is cooked for a very, very long time. It's actually braised, and it's, uh, the lamb itself is seasoned with garlic and uh, fine tomato sauce. Let me try the lamb. Main character of this dish. Oh, I might have to cut it up a little bit. Ooh, look at that fatty part. Oh, the collagen part. Oh, so juicy. Look at this. This is incredibly tender. Mm. It's so nicely seasoned. It's super juicy, hearty. It's so filling and it's perfect for the fall. Let me try a little bit of that uh, squash too. Ooh, look at that squash. Oh, it's almost like spaghetti squash actually. Mm. It's sweet. It really balances out the meat so well because the lamb has a pretty strong flavor. And then the seasoning is quite strong as well. But when you eat it together with the acorn squash, it just sort of balances out almost like a rice on the side. Mm. Don't miss this, um, especially when you come here on a fall or winter day. Bye bye. Mm. It's really tender. The lamb, oh my gosh. 
for this beautiful flower right here. Like I saw one of the Yelp reviews that this is edible. I just want to confirm that this is yes, true. Yes, it is. Yo, these are uh, these are edible orchids. The hydroponic uh, greenhouse that we get all of our produce from, they actually grow these uh, orchids and microgreens for us to our specifications. We use all like non-GMO seeds. We go back and forth between the daisies, the Spanish yeah. orchids, the pretty flowers. Uh, that yeah, yeah, or or the edible lilies. So those are all like uh, throughout throughout the years we change our uh, flowers depending on the season or not but yes uh, all of our flowers and all of our, our microgreens are all edible. edible so you yeah. can finish basically eat everything off of your yeah, you plate. Can actually, you can actually eat that with a stem and it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, taste to it it's, the texture of it is very, very similar to romaine lettuce but it's full of antioxidants. Wow I did not know this at all definitely learned something today and this flower for the antioxidant I'm definitely eating this. <laughs> Nope, like I said, it's fresh and crisp, like um, like a lettuce, like a romaine salad lettuce. This is chimichurri lamb. This is definitely a fusion dish because chimichurri is an Argentinian sauce that is commonly used over there, which is not Persian. But the way they cook this lamb is in kebab style, which is Persian style. And so this is a fusion dish. Can't wait to just dig in right now. Mm. Mm. It's slightly... Spicy actually. It's almost like curry flavor. How is it so good? It's so flavorful. And it's not too salty because sometimes kebab can get really salty. This is amazing, guys. Not only looks good, but tastes awesome. Let me cut a little bit of that tomato too. Wow, look at that. Oh, nice and juicy. Look at this tomato slice here, right here. Mm. Mm. I thought this was just grilled raw, but I think the tomato even is seasoned. Mmm, that is nice. Mmm, another bite of pie. The lamb kebab. I love the herb that's used in here. Mm. I don't know what it is. It's green chili pepper. That's why it's spicy. A little bit of like jalapeno, that kind of spiciness to it. This is good. I love meat that's spicy, so this is awesome. Highly recommended. restaurant, how did this all come together, and sort of your inspiration behind why you wanted to do Fusion Cuisine. I grew up in the restaurant business. My family has kebab carry-out place. So when I turned 18, I knew that I wanted to be in the restaurant business. So I moved to um, New York City, popular uh, Italian restaurant in town Manhattan. And I worked my way up from there, from being a line cook to uh, to a head chef, and eventually I became the executive chef. I wanted to change scenes a little bit. I moved down to South Beach, Miami. And I got a job at another Italian restaurant that has a little bit of uh, French uh, influence as well. And um, one day, uh, I realized all the uh, experience that I have in Italian and the French cuisine, it would be a really cool idea to collaborate that Western European or American cuisine with the Iranian cuisine. So I moved back and uh, got involved with my father and my sister, and we opened up a mousse. And initially, when I was telling people that this is the concept we're gonna go with, you know, most of them were like, wait a minute, this is Persian cuisine, don't sure? mess with it, I don't yeah. think it's gonna work. Yeah. But I kept pushing for it, and, and, and once people tried the food, they, they fell in love. So I'm, I'm just very happy and I feel very lucky. So I noticed that a lot of the Persian cuisine involves using pomegranate juice, pomegranate syrup. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Persian cuisine uses a lot of fruits. Uh, and in most cases, they use a lot of the dry, sun-dried fruits. The idea of marinating meat in pomegranate, it's been more part of the Persian tradition for many, many years. There's so many different dishes that, that are made with pomegranate. Um, and like I said, it's it's one of those uh, ingredients that people say you're not Persian if you don't like pomegranate. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank for you. That. Thank you. I for appreciate your time. it. Thank you so much for coming in. It was a pleasure serving you guys oh, and talking to you. Oh my gosh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I need to finish off the rest of the food now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Look at how busy this place is on a Saturday afternoon. It's already 2.50, which is almost three, not lunchtime, but this place is almost packed. And today is a pretty snowy day, so people still come out here and eat. They're so busy. Chef Sebastian just like running around. He takes order. He goes to the kitchen. He serves. He does everything with great passion. He really sets an example to his staff members. So all the staff here are just very patient to every customer. And you don't see this in every restaurant out here. But this is all 
we want to see in family-run restaurants to feel welcome, to feel uh, at home while dining here. This is great. We don't get this everywhere. Love that the ice cream is not super sweet. It's just um, like it tastes a slight rose flavor in it. And I love that chewy texture from the cherry. Add a little bit of sourness to it too. And it's a really big shout out to our Yelper friends because they recommended not only this restaurant but also this ice cream to make sure to try. So yeah, you guys who have never been to this restaurant, even though you get a stuffed belly in the end, make sure you try the Safran ice cream before you go. And also, the ice cream recipe is passed down from the chef's mom. So that extra honey flavor in it, uh, you don't really can't find it in other uh, Safran ice creams. But like the chef said, that the Safran ice cream has a lot of different variations. This one is really homemade and you can't find it anywhere else because it's a special recipe. Plus, they make it here at the restaurant and it's not store-bought. So you get to come here, make sure you try this ice cream. an amazing experience even though it feels so cold out here we warmed our tummy with the delicious food and really felt welcomed and warm inside the restaurant because of their excellent customer service love it persian food iranian cuisine and fusion definitely check a most restaurant out this is mclean virginia if you enjoyed our video today please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel for more taste of the world cuisine in the u.s until then stay happy eat yummy i'm naomi we'll see you on the next video bye